How we successfully managed to implement an API management pl platform within 13 weeks at the National Institute for Public Health and the Environment. So he's going to join us from Rubik's. Thanks, Mark. Many thanks G'day. for having me here. G'day, great to hear you. A really timely topic as well. There's, with COVID, there's been a, ne a lot of need to immediately introduce um, API and data systems very quickly to be able to share data. Uh, we're going to see this more with um, climate change impacts coming up um, more and more so as well. Um, uh, the so And you'll be able to sh walk us through how you've been able to do that. Yeah, just checking up. Uh, is my, uh, uh, can you see my screen? We can see your screen. So this is fantastic. I'm going to leave the stage now and leave you to it. Okay, great. Thank you very much, uh, Mark, for having me here. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, the talk will be about how to successfully implement an API management platform within 13 weeks at a pretty special customer. It's the uh, National Institute for Public Health and the Environment, uh, which I tell uh, um, about the customer a bit, a bit more uh, in a bit. But maybe first about myself. Um, so you're listening to uh, uh, Mark Kuipers. Um, I'm 35 years old. Uh, in my free time, I uh, uh, do like to play some tennis and uh, play some squash. However, we are pretty much limited uh, due to the uh, regulations. Um, what I actually do during business hours, I think it depends who you ask it. Um, if you ask my parents, I think I think my, my dad pretty much do know what I do. Uh, however, I think if you ask my mother at a party what I do, I think she still thinks I'm fixed Wi-Fi problems at my neighbors, which I actually do. Uh, not for a living, though. Uh, I think if you ask my girlfriend what I do, she thinks I run a call center because of pretty much I talk all day long. And yeah, just became a father and the opinion uh, of my six weeks old actually doesn't really matter. He just wants milk and uh, and his dummy. And he's, he's pretty good. So maybe he will uh, find out later what his dad do. But what I actually really do, or, or at least what I think I do, uh, I work at Rubix. Uh, Rubix is a uh, integration company uh, within the Netherlands. Uh, we focus on, uh, on digital transformations. Um, we focus on integration, API management, uh, data data driven solutions, uh, and uh, application modernization uh, using cloud native uh, technologies. Uh, furthermore, I focus on the Red Hat stack. Um, actually the middleware stack of Red Hat. So that actually concerns the API management platform Triscale, which I will elaborate on uh, in a bit. Uh, obviously OpenShift, it's the uh, the platform that runs all the uh, middleware products of Red Hat. OpenShift is the enterprise Kubernetes, and which is not listed here in this list, but uh, I also focus on uh, Fuse and AMQ, which is the uh, integration stack of, uh, of the Red Hat middleware portfolio. Um, so going to the right, uh, there's this, this architect, um, I do some architecture. I used to do, uh, lots of, uh, development implementations nowadays. It's more, uh, designing and architecture. Um, uh, most recent clients that I've been involved with is, uh, uh, Schiphol Amsterdam airport, which is the biggest, uh, airport of the Netherlands. Um, obviously nowadays there is not that much tourism. But there's a huge, uh, big API uh, management platform over there, uh, which I was happy to be a, a technical product owner of, um, facilitating over one and a half billion uh, calls per year. Uh, is catching uh, catching up information on whether your flight is on time, whether your uh, which gate you need to go to. It's all available via the API management platform that we uh, that we have implemented there. And most recently, uh, the National Institute for Public Health and the Environment. And <clears throat> the reason that's uh, pretty interesting, um, um, because that's where this talk is, uh, is about, that's the customer where we implemented actually the API management platform within 13 weeks. Uh, the National Institute for Public Health is actually the, uh, um, the entity within the Netherlands that um, advises and gives the government information about how to deal with the uh, Corona pandemic. Um, obviously, it's only advising. Eh? It's the government that decides. But uh, you can imagine that uh, uh, from a relatively uh, easygoing uh, IT company, 
This is uh, being under full load and stress because of everyone wants to know something about uh, what state are we in, what's the latest news and stuff like that. So that's all available via this site. So we had to come up with a, um, uh, a, a, size, a sizable API management platform um, and preferably as soon as possible because the pressure was high. Um, the pressure was not only high from the community, it was from the government. So there's lots of eyes facing towards uh, this platform. So what we choose is um, to have uh, OpenShift. OpenShift was already available. Uh, OpenShift is the, uh, the enterprise Kubernetes, which uh, happens to scale uh, quite, uh, quite well. Uh, and in terms of the load that we expect on the platform, um, um, yeah, well, we choose to, uh, to deploy everything on, uh, on OpenShift. Um, TreeScale is the API management product of uh, Red Hat was acquired at 2016. And if you zoom in on, on TreeScale, uh, TreeScale is pretty much a, a very lightweight API management platform, really focuses on the things it should do. Um, so looking at the architecture of TreeScale, it's depicted here in orange. Um, the, the, the gray boxes are obviously uh, the consumers and the uh, providers uh, exchanging data. So in the, main, in, the, in the middle, there's the API cost. It's the API gateway of TreeScale, which is a distribution of Nginx. It's based on uh, OpenResty, which is Nginx, including some Lua modules. We have uh, an API manager, which is the configuration, where the configuration is stored. And APIs can be configured, obviously, via access control, for example, keys or OIDC or whatsoever. Uh, we can uh, define usage policies. So we can limit rate. So we can limit rates on applications, on clients, on endpoints, on, yeah, well, you can name it. It's pretty much fine grained. Um, traffic analytics. So being a central point of entrance, uh, we do know exactly what kind of traffic passes the gateway and all the traffic uh, is uh, communicated back to the API manager. There are possibilities of monetization. Uh, obviously, if you want to monetize your APIs, I want to charge your customers to uh, to pay for your APIs. And there is obviously the third component of TreeScale is the developer portal. That's your um, that's the place where you can um, uh, uh, showcase your APIs. That's where you can show your documentation. That's where you can request API keys. Uh, pretty straightforward. I think those those three are um, are the the basic elements uh, of uh, of an API management platform. If you would like to have some integration stuff or, or protocol transformation or whatsoever, you have to do it outside this platform. It's lean and mean, and it's focused on what it should do best, and that's API managing. <clears throat> okay. Um, so let me see. That was it. Um, so the, 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 the case we faced was uh, there's lots of pressure. There is, uh, we had to, to implemented within 13 weeks. Um, but yeah, well, the world was pretty much upside down. Um, there's no news here, but um, uh, the project we started during the end, yeah, well, mid-summer 2020, and that's just in the middle of the pandemic. And one of the regulations that the uh, National Institute for Public Health prescribed was, please work from home. So obviously we were not allowed actually to meet face-to-face uh, -face because then, yeah, well, they would actually break with their own with their own uh, rules. So uh, we had, we started a project uh, where we could not and did not meet once in real life. So the whole project uh, start uh, in the middle and at the end um, was a full virtual project. Uh, actually, never saw we have never seen each other in real life. It's only those uh, uh, small teams boxes, a couple of uh, cubicle centimeters that we've seen each other. So that gives obviously a pretty um, different dynamic to a, to a project than, yeah, well, the regular project, which we are uh, doing uh, last year, where we started with a physical kickoff, where we got to meet each other, where we drank a coffee, uh, et cetera. So, so how did we manage to do this uh, virtually? Um, and I think the most important thing here, and uh, that's one of the takeaways uh, maybe uh, uh, for today already, uh, API management platform is not only the, the tool. It's not only about the installation of the software. It is uh, much more than that. Um, and 
having a successful implementation of an API management platform, I think it's it's good to have the uh, uh, the awareness that it's uh, not only the tool. So um, this question will um, will mostly about uh, how did we manage to do this virtually? How did we manage to uh, do it in 13 weeks? Uh, and actually, what did we learn? So our our um, main starting point for every uh, implementation at the customer is that we uh, highly value knowledge sharing. And the reason actually that we that we do value knowledge sharing, um, even though the customer just hires us for, okay, come on, implement it and that's fine. But even then, please do pay attention to knowledge sharing because in, in, in essence, it's about creating support. If there's no support for an API management platform within the organization, uh, no one is actually going to use it. And that, that, that's pretty, yeah, that, 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 that's a pity because how it's, it's a powerful platform. It can enable your, your business uh, a lot, but you do know what you should do, should do with it. So it's creating support, not only on the technical part, but also on the business value for an API management platform. Um, most likely technology is the least of your problem. Uh, given uh, OpenShift, given TreeScale, uh, the installation is fairly easy. Uh, it's well documented. It's it's all about Docker containers. Uh, most likely technology is the least of your problem. Having support, making sure everyone is on the same page, uh, uh, making the right decisions, uh, the process, the people, uh, more important than the technology when implementing an API management platform. So please pay attention to that as well. Because otherwise you just become that sports car, that Ferrari, that Lamborghini, that you are very, very proud of that you implemented and that it is live and that you can handle like hundreds and hundreds of millions of calls, but actually no one uses it because they uh, either, they neither see the business value or they actually don't know what to do with it or how to use it. So please take your customer or take your client, take them along the way with knowledge sharing. So how did we approach that uh, at Rubix? Um, we have workshops um, and those API management workshops is all about taking the customer along our journey. It's a journey we do together. So that means that we should fully align on the strategy. So what are you going to do with your API? Why do you want API? Why do you want an API management platform? What can it do for you? Do you know your customers? Do you want to uh, monetize? What's the business model behind your APIs? So uh, API strategy is, is, is fundamental to, uh, to the successful implementation of an API management platform. The developer portal, obviously. So what, what I'm going to do with my APIs, I'm going to expose them publicly. Um, do I need to register to them? Do I need to have a JOL token or do I uh, request a key? Uh, what are the documentation, uh, the, the snippets? Uh, I think there is this 555 rule, which is really important to keep in mind. So the develop portal should uh, uh, show in five seconds which API you offer. It show it has to show you in five minutes uh, how you should use that API with, for example, some code snippets. And within five hours, you should have a working MVP which includes your uh, API. So your develop portal is fully uh, for the uh, uh, sh sh should be um, uh, should be there to 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 fully uh, ad adopt your APIs by the community. Uh, obviously, architecture and security, um, your gateway, your API gateway will be uh, um, publicly available. It, it will be in the DMZ. So how are you going to secure your APIs? Uh, API design, very important. Uh, please only expose APIs uh, in your API management platform that adhere to certain uh, conditions. Uh, for example, the OWASP, uh, OWASP best practices. Uh, do not uh, put stack traces in your in your API response. Adhere to the HTTP response codes, uh, stuff like that. Um, very important to make sure to make it a success that also include your APIs. Uh, process the organization. Uh, it's not only about technology. So, uh, do you what are you going to do with your teams? Is there a support team? Is there how are you going to deal with um, uh, support outside business hours? Because well, yeah, well, once you go public with an API, people expect you to be up and running uh, all the time. So what are the best practices uh, for process and organization around an API management platform? Uh, CICD to facilitate your development teams. Uh, monitoring and analytics. So how do you know, how do you uh, monitor and meter your backend APIs? How do you make sure that 
everything's uh, uh, up and running very smooth? How do you make sure to have a performance of 200 milliseconds for a round trip on your API response? Uh, so all these, these, these components, all these workshops uh, are meant to make it a success. So not only on a technology level, but on a business level, on a process level, and on a people level. Uh, so looking at the implementation itself, so um, not going into the architecture whatsoever, um, because I think that's very customer specific, not allowed to, to share everything as well. So I just want to, to go over some, some um, generic lessons learned, which we, which we actually uh, gathered along the way. Um, it needs to be fast. We were virtually together, so not physical meetings. So we had to, to find a very pragmatic way to, uh, uh, to start the implementation. Uh, I think there, there are actually two implementations for an API management platform or software in general. Um, I, I think we have this, this very theoretical approach where you say, okay, let's first design and architect the full blown, high available, scalable, robust, whatever you want API platform um, and make sure to uh, think everything upfront. Uh, on the other hand, you have the cool kit that says, okay, uh, what are we waiting for? Just, just let's go, let's begin, let's go ahead. Um, I think that the, the the, the truth is somewhere in the middle. Uh, so given you have containers, given you have OpenShift, given you have all the things to automate everything, um, the lessons learned we have is start. It, it, it's just start, start and start small um, and do and do it together. So it's all about uh, doing this journey uh, together. It's not only you being the expert um and implementing a full-blown platform without taking your customer along eh, and skipping all kind of important steps uh, please remember it's uh, you and the customer together because also when you leave they should have a very confident feeling about the platform um, how it was installed and how they should reinstall it even if you're not there anymore so uh two big steps at once might cause your customer to get lost yeah obviously so if you present I, I compare this always to uh, uh, presenting a small kid with a huge plate of, of, of dinner. Uh, you, they don't know where to start. Uh, and if you, if you just feed them small portions, they start eating because they can process small portions. The same here. If you, if you want to make your customer uh, join you in a journey, if you want to have uh, 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 support, if you want to have common ground for your solution, if you want to have API management be a, be a, be a uh, success in your your organization, make sure that uh, the, the steps start small, uh, make sure you, you go in the right speed with the customer. Uh, it should be something of you together. Uh, and obviously, uh, even if you start small and you do and do it together, always keep your end, uh, begin with the end in mind. Uh, that's why you are uh, hired by the customer, you're the expert. So even though you can start small and you can do it together, you're the one that should uh, guide this journey. You're the one that be the, um, yeah, well, the, the, the guided guided tour for the customer, and you know where the end should be. Um, <clears throat> designed to be cattle treated as your pet. Well, obviously, you don't, you, an API management platform is, is, in essence, not a platform that you treat as cattle. Uh, it's, it's not about throwing it away and just restart it, uh, because there might be some downtime. You can, really, you can design against that, but make sure design it as cattle. Um, so one of the things which I always recommend is uh, everything as code. Uh, and the reason that I emphasize here the, the everything and the I mean everything is uh, because there's so much possible when you uh, uh, automate everything with, or, or you, you, um, um, you, you follow the, the, the uh, principle, everything as code, because uh, in, in, in essence, it's containers, it's OpenShift, it's, um, it's 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 all jaml or jsons or whatsoever you, you can put it on a version control if you make a mistake you can go uh, one step back uh, given that you start small and do it do it together uh, you will make mistakes there's there's no problem in, in making mistakes there's there's some learning involved but please make sure if you have everything as code it's very easy to go a step back uh, that's what a container platform is for but please from the beginning uh, make sure you document everything and put everything in code um word documents are fine uh confluence is, is is fine but put your configuration your infra put everything as code uh, and preferably on a version control um yeah and 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 
here here is actually the summary of both so you can't know everything up front so the, so the professor approach um might not be the the best approach here uh, it's it's complex so the, uh, you you don't know the full landscape of the customer the customer don't know what they can expect from your tree skill product or whatever api management product you use so both sides there there are gaps on both sides so there is some upfront designing and that's actually what the what our workshops are for so we we share the knowledge uh, we make sure that we get some initial decisions so we can start the implementation but it's about starting and the role that you have as an expert in uh, in this implementation is uh, not to think of everything up front you're the guided guided tour that makes sure the customer starts implementing but you should definitely prevent them from making irreversible decisions at the start um, so if you if you if you catch the customer making a decision in the start that you uh, upfront know that they will uh, be faced with or confronted uh, in the end uh, please prevent them from doing that but then again allow for making mistakes um, and make sure the the impact is is low uh, um, keeping the impact low uh, everything is code will definitely help you with that um so and that's actually wrapping up the uh, wrapping up the talk uh so there's five minutes left for um for possible questions is there any questions uh that was fantastic thanks mark uh and my apologies for mispronouncing your name the uh so yeah i mean i think that was fantastic when you're starting an engagement with uh with uh, with a body like you were doing who do you make sure is in the room that might be forgotten or that's not sometimes included like do you make sure it's like the po so it was the policy people and the tech people that were involved or or that or the, or the po you know that the policy people were already talked spoken about elsewhere how do you make sure that you've got like business and tech in the room i guess yeah, I think that uh, uh, it's it's very easy to start a start a project like this uh, with an with an architect. Uh, most likely, everyone points to the architect, uh, and from experience, there are a couple of architects. So you have the arch architects that really understand the business, most likely the enterprise architects or whatever you want to call the ro the role, and you have the solution architects, which are actually more the tech tech savvy uh, architects. Um, so maybe you should definitely start with the strategy session. So one of the workshops that I that I explained is about the strategy. And if we do the strategy session, we try to have all the stakeholders uh, in the room. So that, that doesn't mean that we that we do that workshop with 30 people, but at least we have some from, from senior management. Um, because in the end, that's that's the one that pays nine, nine ten times. Right. How much do you need to, so then do you need to sit down with whoever your project liaison contact is? Like, are they thinking like that immediately or do you need to get them to that point? Like, so um, do you need to sit with them and then like brainstorm who should be invited first? No, we, we always do the suggestion uh, because, because most of the times people, uh, customers say, okay, tell me what, what we are going to do. Uh, so sometimes they do have an opinion. Uh, sometimes they say, okay, just take me by the hand and show me where we are going. Uh, either way, we always uh, propose, and that's that's what we learn from experience, always propose. So we want someone from the business, we want someone from management, we want someone from architecture, most likely someone from infra and uh, the lead developers that are going to use the, the platform. Uh, and preferably maybe a uh, one or two consumers if we already uh, know them in advance. Uh, yeah, the, the friends and family of the platform that will be your launching customers. Yeah. So uh, get the whole system in the room. How, 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 how much have you seen it change as far as people accepting that there is that user-centered design? So how have you seen changes in the last few years where people are ready or willing to have that, those, friends and family users involved in the conversation or is that still part of the work you need to do to encourage them to think from that perspective yeah i think i think that it um if, if it i think it depends who you who you explain it to i think that the agile oriented people uh 
it, it's it's about trying in production. Eh? That that's basically what it is. And there's there's lots of of tools and methodologies to to make sure that happens in a very safe and secure way. Um, so if you if you tell that to towards agile oriented people, they are more than happy to facilitate them and and the the the, the um, very uh, um, what is it the modern DevOps teams. Uh, are very willing to to facilitate or, or to help or to be the to be the first launching customer, be the the guinea pig, so so to say. Uh, and if you if you towards the 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 traditional part of the spectrum, they say, okay, I just want to to have other people uh, uh, try it out first. I will be your second or your third or your fourth customer, and he, uh, only if it really really works, then uh, then I then I join the then I join the playground. Uh, I think I think it's different. I think it's it's also uh, part of our job and a part of our role to make sure to evangelize the uh, the uh, API strategy and um, uh, get all the the people enthusiastic and involved. That's about creating support, actually. Yeah, yeah. 